Proverbs chapter number 17. I'm going to read verse number 22. The Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. One more time. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We hear that often quoted. But they leave off the latter part, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Now, people all the time, Mary Hart, do good like a medicine. Well, that's true. But the latter half is just as true. Right? A merry spirit, right? If you've got merriment bubbling down in your heart, right? It does do good like a medicine. But, just as true. A broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart is for your betterment. The thing about medicine is, medicine, back in that day, and still true to this day, medicine does not keep you from getting sick. Medicine is what you take once you get sick. Right? They didn't have vaccines. They didn't have ways to eradicate disease like we do nowadays. Medicine to them was you get sick, then you start taking medicine. It says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Doesn't mean that spiritually there's not going to be days that you feel like you got the cold. Right? Or you got the Rona, or you got the flu, or you got insert whatever else you want to compare it to. But on those days, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. What's the purpose of medicine? To get you better quicker. Right? Some sicknesses are too much for you. Right? Back in ye olden days, okay, tetanus, if you got tetanus, you's done. It took a long time to get there, but tetanus was terminal. Right? Hallelujah. The Lord gave doctors some insight. Now we got you know a vaccine for tetanus. I ain't got worry. I step on a rusty nail, I'm good. I go get a shot, no tetanus. Right? Or the old yeller, right? Back in the day, you get bit by a rabid something, you're going to get rabies. Right? Nowadays, I've heard it's not enjoyable, but you got to get a needle about this big put into your stomach, but it'll keep you from getting the rabies. Okay, we're not talking about those things. We're talking about things that people get every day. Right? I don't know about y'all, but I've told them. I said, y'all, I sit in the back at work because it's my job to watch like this half of the room and so I can do that from the back and they're all coughing and sneezing for like the past three weeks and somebody the other day says well I heard that Rob got sick I'm like y'all been sick for three weeks they're like no we just started coughing I'm like you were coughing two weeks ago and complaining then that it hurt and I'm like y'all keep facing that way don't turn around and start coughing this direction but there are some people that when they get sick mostly men they say I ain't going to the doctor no nah, it's not that bad I'm not sick it's just allergies right or I just you know we was eating some pepper and a piece of it got stuck in the back of my throat and that's why I coughed for four days right there are people that have that mentality then there are people that say you know what I think I'm getting a case of the sniffles Right? If it's allergies, I'm going to take Zyrtec or Claritin or what, Allegra D, whatever it is that you use. Right? Or I've got a cough. I'm going to take some Usenex. Right? There are people that when they start to begin to feel sick, they say, you know, we're just going to nip this in the bud, as Barney Fife used to say, and we're going to take some medicine. Right? Medicine's purpose is to get you better quicker. It doesn't keep you from getting sick. You start taking it once you get sick. Right, whole different Sunday school lesson on how to avoid getting sick. Right, there's a whole Sunday school lesson, Brother Brown, on spiritually washing your hands. Right, but whole point is that medicine is used after you get sick. Well, Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. On those days that spiritually you feel like you've got the gank, right, or spiritually on those days you feel like you've got a migraine. Or spiritually, those days that you feel like, you know, you throw your back out and you don't want to get up out of bed, let alone go out into the world. Right? Those days that spiritually you think, Lord, I, I just can't pick up my cross and follow you today. I'm too sore. 
Well, Mary Hart does good like a medicine. See, so there's a bunch of different kinds of sickness and ailments. Okay, if you like Brother Jordan and you got a bad back, there was a time in your life that every day you woke up, took muscle relaxers and horse grade anti inflammatories. Okay, I'm not kidding you. Them pills were this big. That may be a little bit of a fish story, but I remember them being big. Okay, there's. What's the. Prednisone was a good friend of mine for a while. Right, what's that? That's called a steroid, and not the kind that make you strong, the kind that like make you be able to walk because otherwise you'd be hobbling around. Right? Different kinds of medicines have different purposes. What says that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine? Doesn't say which medicine, because a merry heart can be many types of medicine. Okay, we'll get to that here in a second. But lighter part of this verse, a broken spirit dries the bones. But everybody knows what it is to have a merry heart. Right? We've all been in a state where it didn't matter what happened to you that day. You so excited about something coming down the way or something that you was getting into later that day, it didn't throw you off course because all you're thinking about is the thing that made you marry. Right? Well, the exact opposite of that, according to your Bible, is a broken spirit. If a merry heart is able to get you better regardless of whatever you're facing, a broken spirit's going to dry your very bones regardless of what you're facing. If your spirit is broken, you can have the best day that the Lord could have blessed you with, and yet you'll come out of it worse rather than better. Not because of what God allowed to happen to you that day, but because of the way that you purpose on being. I mean, the Bible does also say, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're sick, whether you're a hypochondriac or not, you're going to end up getting sick. Right? If you think that there's no hope, even though the Bible tells us that we have a hope, like we talked on last week, that's anchored within the faith, nothing can touch your hope. But if you think that you don't have any hope, you're going to be hopeless. If you've got a broken spirit, the whole hill is a mountain. Every slight inconvenience is the end of the world. You have a broken spirit, just news is bad news. Bad news is horrible news. And good news, you don't even want to listen to because you're so focused on being down that you can't think about getting up. Right? We've all heard the expression, lower than a snake's belly. That's when you've got a broken spirit. If you've got a broken spirit, it doesn't matter what you're through, you're going to be broken. It's not a matter of whether or not somebody can put you back together. I know the great physician. He's got the balm of Gilead. He's able to touch anything and make it whole, to restore it to what it was. But if you've got a broken spirit, a broken spirit is something that's going to keep you broken. Okay, We go down to chapter number 18, if you will. Look with me in verse number 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Along the same lines of what we just read, Mary Hart does good like medicine. What well, says here, verse number 14, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. If you've got a merry spirit, right, a merry heart and a good spirit, that are one and the same. If you've got a good spirit, it'll sustain your infirmity. You know what that means? It'll be able to bear your brokenness. And infirmity is something that keeps you from being made whole. Right? The Apostle Paul had an infirmity in the flesh. The Bible calls it a thorn in the flesh. Right? He said that he prayed three times for the Lord to remove the thorn, but he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know what he's telling him? God's grace will be able to keep your spirit in a place that it can bear your infirmities. We're all still in this flesh. None of us is perfect. None of us is able to go out there and conquer the world on our own. Arm of flesh is going to fail you. Right? Lean not on your own understanding. Right? But trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That if God be for you, who can be against you? You're going to have infirmities. But a good spirit can bear those infirmities. Right? They can not only tolerate them, they can treat them as if they weren't even there. It can handle it. 
it can keep things in line. Even though you've got a problem, it doesn't derail the rest of you. Why? Because you've got a good spirit. But then it says, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? Who can bear a wounded or a broken spirit? No one. The rhetorical question, the answer is obvious. What God's asking is, if you've got a broken or a wounded spirit, you can't bear anything else. There's nothing else that you can handle. Because everything in your life that should be working to help bear your burdens, to carry your load for Christ, you're not even... It's like taking the key out of the ignition. Car don't run without the key. You may be able to sit in the car. You may be able to put the car in neutral and push it. right? But if you've got a broken spirit, you're not pushing that car for long. If you've got a wounded spirit, you're sitting on the side of the road thinking, what's the point? But you've got the key in your pocket. Doesn't matter that you've got the key, that you know how to get back in the car. You're wounded in spirit. Right? The innermost man. That new man that God made you into, that new creature. If that gets wounded, if that gets sidetracked, that's the goal of the devil. Because if he can wound you in spirit, you're defeated. No man can bear a wounded spirit. Why do you think that God promised that he sealed your spirit? You couldn't have borne your own, you couldn't have been responsible for keeping your spirit. Your spirit in Christ. It's sealed behind the Holy Ghost, the hand of the Son, and the hand of the Father. We're in His hand, His hand's in the Father's hand. And we've been sealed with the Holy Ghost. So all three of the Godhead, right? one of them's God entirely, but now you got all three of the Trinity got a hold on your spirit. Why? To keep it from being broken. So if you've got a broken or a wounded spirit today, it's not because God let you down, it's because you allowed yourself to become broken. You know what the difference between somebody that's broken and somebody that's merry? Themselves. Now you say, that's cruel, Brother Jordan. It's true. Like all the modern day, all the liberal fooey nonsense, okay, that says you are a product of your environment, hogwash. I've seen people come from the worst of situations, but yet because of their spirit, they got out of them situations. It's not about where you're at, it's about what's inside of you. There's still some truth to the fact that some days you just got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go on out the door and keep going on. Right? I cannot affect your spirit. Your spirit is yours. If you get your hands on this, it's because either I really trust you or I didn't know about it. Okay, this is my preaching Bible. Okay, it very is a birthday gift. Okay, I told everybody when I got a birthday, they got it as a birthday gift. I got a new best friend, right? It's got my name on it so that you know it's mine and don't touch it, right? This is very important. I don't take notes in this. I preach out of this one. Right? I teach out of this one. Okay, this is the one that I want to be in pristine condition because when I get up here, I don't want smears and Jordan handwriting in the way that may have, you know, gone over top of one of the verses. No, 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 no. This is the preaching one. I got the study one. I got the iPad one. I got the one that I take notes and put post-it notes in. I don't want post-it notes sticky on these pages, right? So if you get your hands on this one, right, either I really do trust you or you took it. Okay, this is mine. This is not yours. This is mine. So if something happens to this, whose fault is it? Well, if I wasn't watching it, my fault. If I entrusted it to somebody else, that's my fault. You know who has control over this? I do. Doesn't matter what you want to do to it, as long as it's in my hand, you can't do nothing to it. Your spirit's the same way. You keep your own spirit. I mean, doesn't that the Bible talk about keeping your own vineyard? Right, making sure that there's a hedge set up about it. Now, granted, if you're living right, God's going to hedge you in. But God also does expect you to be faithful to do the things that He told you to do. To be separate. 
Right, to be separated from the world, but also to separate yourself unto Christ. To be a vessel of honor for His use. To be reserved, set aside. That's that word sanctified. Right, that's your responsibility. I can't make you sanctified and I can't make you unsanctified. I cannot separate you and I cannot unseparate you. Your spirit's the same way. I cannot wound your spirit. You know that old thing that they used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me? That's a lie. Words do hurt. But you know who let the words break your spirit? You. You can say whatever you want to about me. They're just words. Right? It's me that chooses whether they hurt or whether they don't hurt. You can do whatever you want to to me. But if I don't let it break my spirit, it won't break my spirit. If I choose to keep a merry spirit, I'm going to be merry. You say, tell me chapter and verse for that. Well, if we had time, we'd turn over to the book of Acts, where Paul and Silas, they literally tried to beat them boys to death. Then threw them into the innermost parts of the prison and left them for dead. Chained hand and foot to the wall. What are they doing at midnight? They're praying and singing unto God. They may have broken their bodies, but they didn't break their spirit. Because they couldn't touch their spirit. You know who was in control of their spirits? Paul and Silas. You know why they had a marriage spirit? Because their eyes were on something different than where they were. Their eyes were on where they used to be and where God had put them. They weren't looking at the fact that they was in a jail. They was looking at the fact that they used to be on their way to hell and now they were a child of the king and on their way to heaven. That they were being beaten in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord allowed it to happen. They considered it no greater honor than to be beaten for the Lord's work. You say, what are you saying, Brother Jordan? That's the difference between having a broken spirit and having a married spirit. The world doesn't decide when you're married. You do. The world doesn't break you. You allow yourself to be broken. Now, nobody in here in their right mind would say, I'd bend myself over my own knee and break myself. But you're the one that let the defenses down. You're the one that let things in that shouldn't affect you, and then they end up affecting you. And according on the authority of your Bible today, out of chapter number 18, verse number 14, if you've got a wounded spirit, you can't bear it. Did not Jesus say that he came to give you life and life more abundantly? You know why he said that? One, he was giving you life, eternal life, the thing that you didn't have. And then he said he was going to give you life more abundant because he knew if you had a broken spirit, you couldn't bear it. He can bear all things, but there's one thing that he told you to bear. He said, take up your cross and follow me. You know what that cross is every day? That's the weight of your own spirit. You've got to bear your own spirit every day. Maintain it. Keep it. Keep the flesh from altering it. There's a weight that nobody else can bear but you. That's your own spirit. You don't have to carry it all the way to heaven. You've just got to carry it with you. Keep it the way that God left it, which was alive in newness of life. Well, back to chapter number 17. Verse number 22, Merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. We've talked about how the difference between a spirit being able to bear your infirmities, a merry heart doing good like a medicine, but a broken spirit or a wounded spirit, it's going to overcome you. It's too much for you. So what the Lord said, we're just going to teach on a little bit on being merry, not just on Christmas. On being merry, not just on Christmas. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Right? Chapter number 18, verse number 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Right? Even though you're not enough, if you've got the right spirit, you'll be able to bear it. You'll be able to sustain it. That word sustain means to keep going. If you sustain something, you're allowed to keep it, but you're also allowed to keep it in perpetuity. That's why when they talk about sustainable 
energy. They want to be able to use wind because wind blows all the time, but there's a problem with that. The wind don't blow enough to cause enough energy out of them goofy turbines. Okay, but what they're talking about is sustainable energy. We don't need to burn anything else. We don't need to dig anything up. We don't need to light coal on fire in order to make things hot so that we can get electricity. When they talk about sustainable, they're talking about you can rely on it for forever. But it says that a man's spirit can sustain his infirmity. If your infirmity, right, which this flesh, that's our infirmity, right, I can't separate myself from that until I get the glory, right? Until either I go through the grave or I go through the clouds, one or the other. But when that hap before that happens, I can sustain this infir infirmity. Did he not make his kings to rule and reign over this flesh? Did he not equip you with everything that you need in your Bible to not only master the flesh but use it for God's honor and glory regardless of what this flesh decides to rear up your spirit can sustain it it can control it but it can also keep it till the day that the Lord calls you home well how do you do that you got to have a merry heart you got to have the right spirit right? we say Merry Christmas it is a very merry day a day that the world recognizes that Christ did come so that Christ could become the payment for our sins so that he could make that payment on your account and then take you to glory. Right? It's a very merry day indeed. But you ought to be merry more than just on Christmas. That, that word merry, okay, not M-A-R-R-Y, M-E-R-R-Y, the word merry means to be joyous right the joy of the Lord is my strength y'all be joyous on a daily basis now joy and happy two different things okay Mary does not mean to be happy Mary means to be joyous happiness is a temporary state something can happen to make you happy but joyous is a lifestyle but Clint sings that song. Right? The joy of the Lord. But why does joy come from God? Because it's something that's permanent. It's not temporary. Everything that comes from God, it's established. Right? Joy is a state of being where regardless of what comes your way, your spirit is not brought down. Mary Hart doeth good like medicine. Right, man's spirit can sustain his infirmity. Sounds like a pretty good description of joy to me. But you want to know how easily joy can be taken away? A moment. You've got to take your eyes off of what's really important, and if you get it on something else, your joy can be gone like that. You know how long it takes to go from being merry to miserable? An instant. It's why the Lord talks about how He's hedged us, in, hedged us in. Why it's so important to keep the hedge. He was looking for a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Keep the hedge around the things of God, the house of God, the people of God. Why do you think that's so important? Because God doesn't want you getting, one, bit by a snake. Okay, two, foxes come into the vineyard and steal away your fruit. Okay, or three, he doesn't want you and either your innocence or your ignorance wandering out into the world. He wants you separated from those things that can do harm to you. Why is that important? Because harm, a lot of times, can take away your Mary. Why? Because we allow harm on the outside to make its way to the inside. You understand that Jesus embraced the cross. Why? For the joy that was set before him. Christ was able to separate what was happening to him and what would happen as a result of what he was going through. He embraced it. He endured it. He sustained it, if you will. Why? For the joy that was set before him. 
He was able to separate what was happening to his body and what would happen to your spirit. What would happen as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection. What was that? That many would become the sons of God. The true key to joy or to merriment right, is perspective. It's not about looking at where you're at, it's looking about where you're headed. Right? If you was focused on what the road looked like on the way to church, it'd been real easy to turn around and say, I ain't dealing with this. Right? If all you saw was every day all the problems that you had to deal with on the job, not what God blessing you with a job and allowing you to work it and allowing to have an income, what that would enable you to do outside of work, it'd be real easy to get depressed. Be real easy to get angry at the boss man. Be real easy to think, well, I don't want to work this job. Well, if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. On the other hand, right, it's real easy to be merry on the job too. Well, I can't believe that God blessed me with a place I'd be able to, you know, meet the needs that I have in my life. I can't believe that God would allow me to you know, work at a place where I can witness to so many people. You say, well, I'm the only Christian on the job. Sounds to me like you prime real estate for witnessing. What better place than to be the only witness? That means you get to go wherever you want to go talk about Jesus. You don't have to divvy it up with somebody else. Well, hey, you deal with them people, I'll deal with these. No. You get to shine a light as bright as you want to shine it. But you don't understand the people that I have to work with. Well, I'm glad that I get to deal with those people because some people, they don't have the spirit to deal with them. They got a broken spirit. Right? They wouldn't be able to handle it. But the Lord's been so good to me, I can't help me but marry. As a result of it, I can deal with whatever comes my way. Not because of who I am, but because of what He's done for me. It's all about perspective. A flat tire is either the end of the world or just an inconvenience. Right? A bump in the road is either something that you're going to complain about for 30 minutes down the road, or it's something that you forget about as soon as it happens. Right? A bad day is something that only lasted for a day. Or it's something that can ruin your week, your month, or even your year. It's all about perspective. Where's our perspective supposed to be? On the one that is altogether lovely. Looking towards Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It's real easy to be merry when you're looking at the one that is altogether the reason for Merry Christmas. It's real easy to be merry when you look at the one that everything that comes from his hand is good. He's never had something that wasn't even okay. It's all been good. From the beginning until the end, everything that comes from God is good because the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Everything that comes from him is good. Why? Because he is good. Chief says it every time that he gets a chance to pray at church. Thank you for being a good God. He's a good God. That means everything he does is good. Can't separate it. If you're looking at goodness, it's real hard to think about anything other than how good God is. If you're looking at the one who has the keys to death and hell, death and hell don't seem so scary. Because you realize he promised to take the sting out of death, and I don't have to go to hell. If you're looking at the one that said, we can do all things through him because he strengthened us, it's one thing to know that and it's another thing to look at the one that promised it to you as he says here let's just take another step let's go to another mile follow after me when he gives you some handfuls on purpose press down shaking bubbling over it's real hard not to be married when you start looking at the one that is the reason for being married now, if you start looking in the mirror, I get it. You're not going to be very merry. You're going to be the Grinch. Right? Because you've got to look at yourself every day. If all you're looking at is what you can be, you're going to be disappointed. If 
all you're looking at is what you can do, you're going to get down real quick. That's why he said, don't look unto yourself, look unto him. Don't look at others. They're just as flawed as you are. Other people needed a Savior just like you did. You know what that means? They're not perfect either. And as much as you love them, it's one thing to have somebody that you care about. It's another thing to look towards that person. You know, that means you're basing your whole life off of how things go with that person. You get your eyes off Jesus, you're not going to be merry for long looking at somebody else. Because guess what? They still got to take showers. Right? They still got to wash their clothes. They've still got to do everything that you do. Why? Because they're not perfect. They're not eternal. They're just dirt. Just like you. They're going to let you down sooner or later. Maybe not on purpose. Maybe not intentionally. They, hopefully nobody's hurting you willfully. But it's going to happen if your focus and your perspective is on other people. People are just people. I know the one that made people. I know the one that when he made them, they was perfect. And he promised that one day he would restore us to what we should have been, which was in the image of God. I'd rather focus on Him. You want to be merry every day of the year? Look at Jesus. You want to be miserable every day of the year? Look at anything else. Right, you want to have a spirit that can sustain your infirmities? Look at Jesus. The one who said that He'd not put more on us than we're able to bear. You know why your spirit can sustain your infirmities? Because God promised that if you know it was too big for you, he would carry it. Not a problem dealing with things that are too big for me when I'm looking at the one who said he was big enough to take care of it all. When I know that he's able to do everything, for, but he asked me to do some things for myself, I'm okay with doing them because I know everything else that he's taken care of. It's real easy to sustain infirmities when you're looking at the one that said, all you got to do is handle this. Because I got all this. Good deal. I take that deal every day of the week. Why? Because God says if you want to, for a time, He'll let you bear your own burdens. You know what you're going to find out? They're too big for you. Sin was too big for you. Life's too big for you. People are too big for you. You can handle it on your own you know what you're going to do you're going to go insane trying to figure this world out good luck because I know what the end of this world is the end of its course is destruction it's death you can't make sense of chaos you can't make sense of something that is designed to go out of order because I know what the end of it is confusion that the Antichrist steps in and says I got all the answers. The only thing is he doesn't have all the answers. You know what the world looks like before the Antichrist steps out and reveals himself before Jesus raptures the church out of here? You know what that world looks like? Complete chaos. Completely unstable. Everything has spun out of course. Good luck figuring that out. You know what he told me to figure out? He told me to figure out how to put one foot in front of the other and follow after him. I'd rather do that than try to take it all of my life into my own hand. Good luck. Imagine if God said, okay, here's your life. Um, good luck trying to figure out how the oxygen works before 90 seconds or so when you pass out. That's what you're saying when you say, Lord, I got this. He said, well, it's foolish. Yeah, but people still do it all the time. And as a result, their spirit's not able to bear their infirmity because it gets wounded real quick. They can't even bear their own spirit, let alone their own life. You know what you can bear? Whether or not you're merry. Whether or not you're joyous. There's no restriction that says you've got to do this, that, and the other in order to, be, or to have the joy of the Lord in your life. No, you just got to be obedient. You just got to follow after Him. That's it. There's no checklist. 
There's no long list of things. You don't have to go sit in a cave for 40 years and ponder on why certain things happen the way that they do. No, you just got to follow after Him. And you know what being merry is? It's acting on that joy. That's all it is. But see, the Bible says that a broken spirit dries the bones in chapter number 17. And then in the 14 it says a wounded spirit who can bear. But it says dry at the bones. That reminds me of like, uh, osteoporosis. What's that do? It takes something that was strong and it makes it weak. Right? It dissolves it. It erodes it. It dryeth the bones. They tell me, I don't know because I've never, you know, cut somebody's leg in half to take a look. But they say that on the inside of those bones there's this thing called marrow. Right? And marrow is not a bone. Marrow, kind of like a jelly. You know what comes from marrow? Your very blood. If you lose blood, you know where new blood comes from? The marrow of your bones. You know what that marrow, if it gets infected, that that infection spreads to your whole body. So when I think of drying the bones, I'm thinking it's sucking the very marrow out of your bones you know what that means you can't make new blood you can't keep going every time you get hurt it feels like you're dying because you can't make more blood for yourself feels like that marrow okay that's what seeps in if you break a bone that's what seeps out and it becomes new bone it hardens and solidifies eventually Every time you break a bone, you know it's staying broken. It's not going to heal itself. And if you think, if your bones are made brittle, you can, I mean, there have been a lot of movie characters and Jordan being a nerd comic book characters, right, that have had conditions that, and it's real life conditions where people, if they bump up against the cabinet, right, they can break a bone. Somebody trips and you know stubs their toe up against the wall, they could break one of the bones in their foot. If somebody falls down a set of steps, right, they can break nearly every bone in their body. Because their bones are so weak and so brittle and so frail. Right? That's the image that the Lord's trying to get there yet when he says that a broken spirit dries the bones. If you've got a broken spirit, it don't matter what comes your way. It could just be somebody looked at you the wrong way, and next thing you know, you've got a broken bone. But what's worse is, it's not going to fix itself. A merry heart knows, well, hey, I just broke a bone, but it's going to fix itself eventually. Let's put it in a cast. It's going to be itchy for a while. Somebody give me a stick to stick down inside of that thing and scratch it. Now, I may have to wear a funky boot for a while and walk around in it. I may have to be in a wheelchair for a while keep weight off of it. But it's going to heal. There's a completely different attitude behind, well, I just got hurt and I know that I'm hurt for forever. As opposed to, well, I'm hurt, but I know I'm going to get better. Remember, a merry heart doeth good like what? A medicine. You know that you're going to get better. And you know you're going to get better sooner than without the medicine. You may be able to overcome some things, but a merry heart may let you do it quicker. But if you've got a broken spirit, you know that you're stuck the way that you are. You know it's not going to change. I mean, the Bible talking about Mephibosheth, it says he was crippled by a fall. I don't know what happened when... You know, what kind of fall he had. All I know is, is that he fell and he stayed the way that he was after he fell. He wasn't able to take himself and go where he wanted to go. Right? But yet he was exalted to what position? He said that he was, or David said that he would eat at his table like his children. He was adopted as a son of the king. And I've heard the analogy and very powerful analogy. Once Mephibosheth, once they pushed his chair into the table, nobody could tell that he was any different than any of the other king's children. 
He looked just like one of them. Nobody was looking at his feet anymore. Well, there's some people that are like Mephibosheth. They've been crippled by a fall, but not because God can't heal them, but because they've got a broken spirit and they choose to stay that way. They can't fix themselves, but they also don't want to humble themselves and say, Lord, help me. There's some people that their bones are so dry that they wouldn't know what it is to drink of the well that Jesus said of living water. They've forgotten the taste, right? The refreshment of what the Word of God is. To be refreshed. To have, you know, the things of the world washed away from the day to where they can sit down and think, today wasn't that great, but it's going to get better. Well, how can he say that, Brother John? I know where we're headed. No matter how bad today is, there's coming a tomorrow that's going to be so good, I forget about all the bad. Not on my authority, but because one of these days, he's going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. One of these days, we're going to look back and think, well, why were we even worried about that? How dare we be worried about something when the very one who framed the world said that our life was in his hand? How dare we be anything but married? You know what you're going to be in heaven for all of eternity if you're saved? You're going to be married. How else can you worship them with a merry spirit? Right? There are those that have had things that, from the world's point of view, should have broken them, but yet they've still got joy and they can come in and worship in merriment, even though they may be hurting, they may be wounded, but their spirit isn't wounded. The Apostle Paul, he was wounded. You know what happened after God sent the earthquake, after the jailer got saved, after they went to his house and his whole family got saved? It says that the jailer patched them up. You know why the Apostle Paul wasn't wounded in spirit? Because he knew that if, you know, I don't know at what point God told Paul that he was going to have to stand before Caesar one day, but Paul knew that God wasn't done with him. That meant that God wasn't going to leave him in the prison. If God wanted Paul to go somewhere, he knew that he's going to have to make Paul a way to get there. So if he stayed wounded, if his legs didn't work, he knew that God was going to send somebody to carry him. Or he knew God was going to make a way to get him to where he needed to be. He wasn't worried about all that. He was just thankful for the fact that he wasn't where God found him. That God took him out of the miry clay and he set him on a rock. You want to know what too many people's problem is? Why they can't be merry all year long? Because they're focused on where they're at, not where they're going. Their perspective is on what's happening today. Their perspective is not on things that are eternal. You know how I know that? They worry about things that in a hundred years ain't going to matter anything. They're consumed in things that don't have eternal repercussions. And they look at others who have a soul that's just as eternal as the one that's in them, and they don't care about where it's going to spend all of eternity. Those that look at things on how they're going to be eventually, they care about things that have eternal ramifications. They're worried about gold, silver, and precious gems. They're not consumed with wood, hay, and stubble. They're not worried about things that are going to disappear with the passing of time, they're worried about things that are going to endure. Because a merry heart, you can endure. Right? You can sustain any infirmity. You can take that medicine of a merry heart and it's going to get you better quicker. But all the while that you're healing, you're still going to be focusing on the things that matter. Not on the things that are meant to distract you, meant to derail you, meant to wound and break your spirit. Instead, you're going to overcome them. Not saying you're not going to have to deal with them. Medicine's only used for people to get sick. Remember, we said that at the beginning. Not saying you're not going to get sick. Not saying you're not going to experience some hardship, but I'm saying it's going to make things better quicker. And I'm saying that the alternative of having a broken or a wounded spirit, it's awful. You cannot bear that. So I'd rather bear the day and keep a merry spirit 
I'd rather run home every day and say, Lord, I need you to patch me up again, rather than go out on my own and find myself in a ditch. Too prideful, too humiliated to say, Lord, I need help. Because I thought I was strong enough, but you know what I did? I wounded my own spirit. I broke myself. A lot of people broke him. Too few that go out and are merry on more days than just Christmas. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.